All right guys, so with the release of iOS 17, it comes hundreds of tweaks, updates, and features. I'm not gonna go through all of them. In this video, I'm gonna showcase my top five features with iOS 17 that I find practical that you guys can start using straight away. So let's just get straight into it. Number one is this brand new feature called standby mode. This essentially will create like an always on digital clock, which you can use with widgets. Once you have your phone connected to your charging cable or a MagSafe charger, you lock the screen, you turn it sideways, and it will have an always on display of a very nice looking widgetized display. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so with standby mode, we go into settings. You'll see a new option there called standby. You go ahead and turn that on. What that will do is when you lock your screen and plug your charger in, turn the phone sideways and mount it in that horizontal position, it will give you a very nice standby display. This is essentially another advanced version of always on. You also have the option to make it into night mode. So if you wanna set this next to your bedside table at nighttime, but you don't want it to be too bright, as soon as you turn night mode on, this will give it a red tint and it'll be less bright than it would be that normally. And if you want to also wake up your phone, if it detects motion around the phone, then you can set that on. I think I would leave that generally off, especially when I'm using this as a bedside table display, so that if you move nearby to the phone, you don't want it to keep brightening up and hitting your eyes whilst you're still trying to sleep. But let's go ahead and see how it looks with just the standby mode on. And there are three different layouts. So now that the phone is locked and sideways, just plug in the charging cable. And here is the standby display. So you can cycle through the three different profiles of the standby display. This is the default one where it's a split screen with multiple widgets. So you've got one left and right. If you cycle, this will give you your cycle through of your photos app with the clock just there and the date. And the last one is a very large digital clock there. If you wanted to edit any of these, all you need to do is just hold down and then you have the options to cycle through which widgets you want to display. Of course, having a clock is probably going to be the most common one. You can also add more. So as you would with home screen widgets, there's plenty of different options that you can add. If you didn't want a clock, you can also just have other pieces of information, maybe your contacts some battery health information for your Apple devices, calendars, and things like that. You even have the option to add some notes app. So pretty much the options are exactly the same as you would expect for your home screen widgets. But there's also a lot of standby widgets that will be available on the App Store from third party providers that you can also add directly from there onto the standby profile. When you hit done, there you see, whatever you selected, you can also cycle through by swiping up and down from that selection of widgets that you've added. And I like having this view with the calendar as well. I think it's just a very convenient way just to see the date and time at the exact same time. If you cycle through, of course, this will cycle through your photos and then you can change the large clock as well to be digital or analog, whichever you prefer. And there's also lots of different options that you can set via the app store with third party apps. And that's how you can use standby mode, which I think is one of my favorite features of iOS 17. Number two is the option to auto delete two factor authentication SMS messages. So you know how you would sometimes need to log into a certain website or app and it requires to send you a four digit, six digit code via SMS and you have to enter that into the application. You sometimes get a pop-up to say you copy this from messages directly when you're already on that app, which also is a very nice feature. Most of the time you will then go back to your SMS app just to delete that message so you don't have that code just sitting there in your messages app. This can automatically delete it once you've copied it into an app that uses that code to log in. That is a really nice feature. So let's take a look how that is. So for this, it's very simple. You go to settings, passwords, password options, and then in here, there's a toggle called clean up automatically, which will delete all the verification codes in messages once you've copied it and pasted it into the relevant app. So very straightforward and easy, but it is one of those features that is extremely time saving. Number three is offline Apple Maps. I've always been a fan of Google Maps more than Apple Maps, but now that Apple Maps has this nice feature of cropping offline versions of a map, I think I'm gonna start using it a lot more, especially when I go abroad and maybe I rent a car, or if I'm in an area which has very low internet connection and services, I may want to just use and switch over to using an offline map, which you can crop and use directly from the app itself. Let's take a look. So when you first open Apple Maps with the new update, you'll get an introduction to offline maps, which is like this. Let's go ahead and hit continue. You can see it's created a little crop. You can also access this by going to your 
avatar icon on the top right, going to offline maps and then searching for a location and selecting the size like this with the cropping of where you would like to be offline. So in the UK, let's say for example, I want to drive around Newcastle and just in case I don't have any signal or internet connection, then I can just download this whole area and then hit the download button there. It will then start downloading and then it will be added to your downloaded maps in your profile settings there under offline maps. If you go there, you'll see it's now downloading. There we go, it's now downloaded. And then you can access that anytime and start navigating around that particular area very easily. And this is perfect for when you go on holidays, if you wanna just drive around with your rental cars, download an offline map like this, and it will be very convenient. Of course, Google Maps also has this feature, but this being introduced to Apple Maps and the way they've done it with this cropping feature, I think is actually a very nice UI. Number four is Safari profiles. So if you use Safari on your phone quite often and you use it for work, for personal reasons, they've made some really good updates to this as well. And there's something called profiles that you can use to segregate between personal tab browsing and work browsing and any other types of differentiation of your searches directly from the Safari app. Let me show you how that works. Safari profiles, I think is a really great feature. So when you do open up Safari, you'll see there's some profile tabs along the bottom. So I have work and six tabs, which are my personal tabs. Then of course you have private browsing there, which is locked via your face ID. And this is a really great way to distribute and have separate profiles that will have their own history, their own grouping, your favorites, everything like that, as if it's its own separate browser. So then if you wanted to then just open up tabs relating to your own personal searches, you do that there. And then you can switch over and open up tabs that relate to your work, your office or anything like that. And you can also transfer some of these over between different tabs as well. So if I wanted to just hold this down, I can go to move to tab group and then I can select work. And this will now be there in my work profile. And you can also create as many profiles as you want. When you go into your settings in under Safari, you go to new profile, you select this, you can change the icon, the color, give it a name and that will appear on your Safari. In Safari itself, you can actually go into the menu item there and then switch between either of the profiles you've got and then you can create another empty tab group directly from here, which is also a very convenient way to distribute all of your different searches, your favorites, depending on what you would like to do. What I like about the private browsing tab as well with the profile that they've now enabled with iOS 17 is having it locked via a face ID or passcode. So if you are browsing privately, and this is convenient, so for example, if you've forgotten to close your private browsing and you've just closed Safari, if you leave your phone just on the desk, anyone goes back and opens Safari, they will be able to access it. But now that it's locked with face ID, if I go back, you saw that it asked me to unlock it with my face before anyone else can see what you've been browsing. So these are all the Safari profiles and I think that is a really nice update to browsing. And last but not least, number five, interactive widgets. Up until this point, you can create a lot of widgets on your phone, but to do anything with them, as soon as you tap that widget, it will open up the widget in its full app and you can't really just do certain things inside that widget on your home screen. Now you can with something called interactive widgets. So I'm gonna showcase a sample of one interactive widget, but I also have another video coming very soon of my top five interactive widgets from the App Store, which I know you're gonna like, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss that one. Let's go ahead and take a look. So with interactive widgets, like I mentioned, if you tap any widget that you used to use before iOS 17, it will just open up the app that the widget originated from. This is an interactive widget where now you can actually tap within the widget and things will actually happen without the actual app opening up. So I have this widget called to-do list and I'll be covering this in one of my top five interactive widget app videos coming out very shortly. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those ones. Now I can tap my to-do list here with any of the items once I've actually completed them without having the need to open the widget into its full app. So if I tap this, you can see I'm now interacting with the widget itself and I can just do that from the home screen and I don't need to leave the home screen at any time. And you can obviously go ahead and uh, create more to-do list items on the app by just tapping elsewhere on the widget itself, like so. And then you just hit new reminder and create as many other interactions as you'd like. And I'm gonna be testing out a lot of different scenarios with lots of different interactive widget apps. And I think this is a really big step up in the widget game for Apple.
So that's it guys, those are my top five iOS 17 features that I've started using on a daily basis. Let me know which ones you like to use. There's tons of them, there's plenty of different options. You may have seen plenty of videos already. Make sure to drop a comment down below of your favorite feature of iOS 17 so everyone else can read about that. Make sure to subscribe. I've got lots of top five different iOS 17 related videos coming out very soon. Like this video and I'll see you at the next one. Take care.